What's so special about theological libraries? There is no way to typify religious libraries as a whole. There are four primary settings for religious libraries, and each one has its own characteristics. A few of them share similarities, but there are differences between the groups as a whole. Barrick Library at the Jack M. Barrick Hebrew Academy is a parochial school library. The mission of the academy is to provide a comprehensive and rigorous college preparatory curriculum with the teaching of essential Jewish and American values and texts. The library does not have a separately written mission statement, but seeks to align with and support the overall mission of the academy. The Ralph and Julia Cohen Library is a congregational library and is part of the Isaac M. Wise Temple. The library is one of the largest synagogue libraries in North America. As such, it is not your typical congregational library. The library fosters the temple mission to offer a variety of methods to engage with life's Jewish journey. The next two libraries are more typical of congregational libraries. The Fan and Hyman Jacobs Library supports the synagogue mission to be the conduit to bridging the individual needs of faith, community, tradition, learning, and service. The Allen Lampert Memorial Library, which is headed by the same librarian as the Cohen Library, also serves the overall synagogue mission. The congregation seeks to observe an egalitarian, vibrant Judaism, balance openness and traditional practice, promote learning and ritual, and heal the world with acts of loving kindness. Princeton Theological Seminary's library is a typical advanced academic and theological library. Like the previous mentioned libraries, it does not have a separate mission statement, but supports the overarching seminary mission to shape the instruction, research, training, and education provided by the seminary with the Reformed Presbyterian tradition. The National Sephardic Jewish Library is part of the American Sephardi Federation. Unlike the other libraries, this one has its own mission, which is to collect, preserve, and provide access to resources for the study of Sephardic Jews tracing their ancestry. Access and user bases can be quite broad in theological libraries. While we can guess the typical user base in different types of religious libraries, access is not limited to those patrons. In all but Jacob's library, access is granted to some extent to members of the greater community. I enjoyed learning that even preschoolers can borrow materials at Lampert Library. One of my favorite anecdotes was hearing about the time a nursing student came to Cohen Library to research Jewish patients and keeping kosher. Most theological libraries are small, with only one staff member reporting directly under the parent organization. The exceptions to this rule are larger, usually academic-type libraries. Volunteers are needed to help manage general library tasks. Managerial duties are quite broad in the smaller theological libraries. Because these are generally staffed with one professional, this person is tasked with all responsibilities for running the library. This includes all aspects of management, as well as general library tasks. For libraries who are blessed with volunteers, general tasks such as shelving and circulation duties are assigned to them. This leaves the management tasks, which includes marketing and budgeting, to the professional. Of course, larger libraries with more staff members have more hands to do the work. But even in these institutions, the general tasks are given to paraprofessionals, while the professional staff members handle the management duties. According to a 2008 research study of theological libraries, it was found that of the large percentage of libraries with websites, only 40% provided a link from the parent organization site to the library. Also, once the library website was found, 20% of those sites did not provide a link to the online catalog. This means that visitors to the parent organization website are unable to find the library's online presence. For those few who are either insiders or lucky enough to somehow stumble upon the library site, being granted access to the library holdings is not something guaranteed. The good news is, however, that the reality does not reflect this. Perhaps it is because this study is now six years old, but technology plays a vital role in all four types of religious libraries. 
all of the parent organizations in our sample have websites with links to the libraries on the main page. Most of the libraries have online OPACs. In fact, of our samples, Lampert Library is the only one that does not have an online catalog. The majority of theological libraries have networks and or Wi-Fi access. Again, Lampert is the only exception with a single computer for the librarian to complete her tasks. Information services provided vary among the libraries with user needs dictating what services are provided. Congregational libraries tend to offer the least amount of diversity with academic libraries offering the most. When it comes to facilities, smaller theological libraries are in the same boat they are with staffing. In other words, they must make do with what they have. While no librarian thinks their library is big enough, theological libraries typically are given small rooms with which to set up shop. Being a seminary library, Princeton is comparable to other advanced academic and research libraries. Of the smaller libraries, Cohen has a recently remodeled 3,000 square feet of space which houses the library proper as well as an archives and museum. Size of the library is in direct proportion to user needs and support from the parent organization. Lampert, which has the least use among the community, is housed in a small room in the back of the building. Most of the circulation occurs because of the satellite tables that are set up outside of the sanctuary. Sadly, very few patrons actually enter the library. Princeton, again, like many other large academic libraries, has the space and resources to reflect the research needs of its user base. The highlight of the facilities at Barrick Library are the furnishings. With an area rug, coffee tables, and dorm chairs, the atmosphere is warm and inviting. The two Torah arcs, while serving a function, provide beauty and add to the warm feeling. While theological libraries of the past may have collected only books, this comparison of libraries in a 2011 study of Quaker meeting libraries proves that modern religious library collections have entered the 21st century. Most funding for library projects and needs comes from private donations. In general, librarian salaries, however, come from the parent organization. Because Barrick is a religious school and receives funds from the state of Pennsylvania, limitations are used on which funds can be used for what. State funds cannot be used to purchase any religious materials. Jewish history and literature materials may be purchased with state funds. However, materials strictly of a religious nature can only be acquired with school funds. Marketing and public relations is crucial to the success of theological libraries. Because most theological libraries rely heavily on private donations, the librarians must make the library visible. Another need for public relations is the ever-growing public perception that all information is freely available on the Internet. While all libraries fight this perception, due to their specialized nature and collections, theological libraries are more likely to see patrons seeking information elsewhere. Currently, theological libraries are engaging in various forms of marketing, from something as simple as placing a table outside the sanctuary to more advanced efforts such as creating movies about patrons using the library. While all of the competencies detailed by the Special Libraries Association are important for theological libraries, some are more crucial than others. The most critical competencies for theological librarians are the ability to align the library with the parent organization, the ability to communicate the library's value, the ability to manage and operate budgetary issues, the ability to market and publicize the library and its projects, the ability to build a dynamic collection centered around user needs, knowledge of the resources within the library, the ability to provide various means of access to information, understanding and ability to use evidence-based management to support decisions, and continuing awareness of new technologies that can and might be implemented at the library. SLA's personal competencies are also vital to the success of a theological librarian. Those most critical are seeking out new opportunities, the ability to clearly and confidently articulate ideas, always seeking networking opportunities, being a risk taker, the ability to think creatively and always remaining flexible and positive despite continued change. How are theological librarians faring and what can they do in the future to ensure success? 
Because of the inherent differences among the four types of religious libraries, it's difficult to lump them all together and evaluate success. However, given the various degrees of support and size, it's necessary to say that today's theological libraries are holding their own overall. In order to ensure success and growth in the future, theological librarians must find new and effective marketing strategies, network and partner with individuals and organizations who can support the library, seek new and cost-effective methods of providing information, and increasing their creativity and flexibility. Other libraries considered for this project were Prentice Memorial Library at Temple Beth El, located in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, Southeastern Baptist Theological Seminary in Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Hebrew Union College Jewish Institute of Religion, with locations in Cincinnati, Jerusalem, Los Angeles, and New York.